sending a good signal. Good. And then he throws an intro up, and we're live. So thanks a lot for making it in, man. I know it wasn't easy to 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 make the time, dude. I I really do appreciate it. I appreciate you being flexible because I got to tell you, you know, we're just preparing a lot on the plate, but still great to see you and you're good, good see about you. Uh, you know working it out. So I'm like, uh, I think we got to be men of our word. And yeah, I'm not just gonna blow smoke. Yeah, you know, you go well. Yeah, we'll get down there, buddy. The old, pat, <laughs> old pat on the back and uh, not see you. <laughs> right. <laughs> I wouldn't do that to you. Yeah. Well, I was just like, everybody around me is like, when's the next podcast? We had an awesome first one sure. with a journalist, Scott Atkinson from uh, Flint. Um, we had technical difficulties, though. We didn't have our shit wired tight, so there were some sound things happening. That was like the first one? That was the very first well, one. Worked yeah. the bugs out a little bit, right? Yeah. You know? It's amazing how much you learn what you don't know, you know. I mean, I, I had a lot coming from radio, you know what I mean? I know what it's supposed <laughs> to look like, and you know what I mean? Like, yeah. but, um, yeah, the, the minute you think you got this shit licked, like, that's then something pops up that you didn't never even thought about. That's, so. that's the necessity and beauty of doing it. You got to do it. Got to do it. Just can't dream it. No, you got to do it. So it was a great podcast. It was like a perfect template for what i wanted to do in terms of the conversation and you know having somebody who's involved with who's local but involved with bigger things you sure. know it was, and, it was perfect and you sought him out to you had something specific on your mind yeah well i train jujitsu with him he's a training partner oh my God. so it's just like and yeah. he's a journalist and he teaches journalism at u of m flint yeah and he's you know neck deep in the fucking mess you know and there's uh, news outlets from out of town calling contacts to get coverage uh, it's really cool if you get a chance to watch the first tim cast it's the it's uh, scott atkinson and he he goes into a detail about how um he was busy with his kids and the new york times calls and they need somebody to cover the like the press conference for when they open up the indictment got it so he was able to hook up one of his students with an opportunity to correspond for the new york times wonderful yeah so shit like that it was really cool but um, everybody's like, when's the next podcast? You know, when's the next podcast? And I was really digging my heels in about you, you know, being the, 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 the next one. And then, of course, you're not doing anything that's music specific. I mean, you're doing no. things that you're interested in, passionate about. Yes. Wonderful. Yeah, anything. Dude. We got a list of, of, of things that, list of people we want to reach out to. Um, I mean, I saw this thing in the in the in the news, Detroit uh, news, the free press about these guys in Detroit lost their jobs, both in the auto industry. They started a car wash, okay, in front of their house, dude. Uh, in 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 Detroit. In Detroit. How, how do you zone that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't Only think, in Detroit. I, I don't think they, I don't think they pulled permits. Uh, but but yeah, that's the question, right? How does that go down? But it's an amazing story. They 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 ran a hose, you know, from their house. And they hung an American flag. This is what really got me. They hung an American flag on the fence and just had a hose, brushes, and a bucket and a sign. And now people come from the suburbs that, you know, they got a little bit of news coverage and people are coming. They got lined up. They got employees now, dude. These guys got employees at this car wash. I think it's wonderful on one hand, but really heart wrenching on another. Yeah. You know, when you consider the. Um, the complete lack of opportunity um, that uh, that people see today. What I saw when I got out of high school, uh, you know, there really was the incredible amount of diminishing opportunity. And when people got to go, you know what? I'll do anything I got to do. I love that, you know. But to set up a car wash in front of your house with the whole the water from your house, you know what I mean? And Detroit people got trouble paying the water bill as it is. You know what I mean? These guys, they got water from their house. God bless them. They're going to pay their bills uh, somehow, and they do it, you know. But you come from a car company to washing cars in front of your house, this is what we're going through right now? That's incredible. Yeah. You got it. You Like, you just nailed it. Like, there's there's the good and the bad. The bootstrap thing is fucking awesome, yes. right? That's just, that's what you want to see, right? You want to you hope that that's still alive and kicking, 
but then the conditions to have to pull your bootstraps up that severely it's that it's like that <laughs> really we got to do that we're doing that now <sighs> yeah so i got a list of, uh, of people like that stories like that that i want to get in here you know yeah. go down get the car washed invite those get those guys in here you yes. know talk about it yep. you know yep. and uh but i was adamant <laughs> to the to the frustration of the people around me i was like no nah, vin's gotta be we gotta launch this thing the story's gotta start with vin you know because um obviously a- allegedly i was in the band for i, I think 10 years and... i think that's accurate <laughs> <laughs> What was that like? <laughs> you know what? It was always a blast, but became kind of a whirlwind uh, uh, eventually. Um, that was exhausting. You, you know, you tell me. I, I mean, it, for the most part, you know, 90% of it was fantastic, you know. Uh, but then you, you tell me about the other 10% that you do or don't want to speak about, you know. It's like... <sighs> Oh, I'm an open book, dude. I, yeah. No, was, and I understand. Yeah. I mean, sh- I, I've had to be yeah. <laughs> with what I've been through, you know. <laughs> I've had to be an open book, and but what I, I put myself out there, you know. Well, it's rock and roll too, you know. People say these kind of things all the time. Well, that's what rock guys are supposed to do, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember sitting in a session with a therapist one time. You know what I mean? It's just like, and immediately they go, "Well, what do you do?" Well, you know, I play in a band, and all of a sudden. You get all these free tickets that normal people will never get. All of a sudden, they go, well, where do you play? And all of a sudden, they kind of become a fan, and then you get no good therapy at all because just, they just want to be your friend, you know? So they'll tell you shit like, well, that's what rock guys are supposed to do. Get over it. <laughs> Dude, that, that shit happened in the program, bro. That's my point. Yes. That shit happened in the yes. program. Yes, that's my point. For for in that environment, for you to fucking start getting those kinds of tickets and those passes, you're like, whoa, whoa wait, wait, wait. <laughs> That's exactly it. So you just go, where do I get solid advice? You know what I mean? And I know that there are uh, friends of mine out there that you know certainly play in bands that they're all um, they're all sober, but they're around other guys like that are I I don't want to say it's successful, but in that same st- stratosphere that they're in yeah. that somebody might call them out on their shit you know what i mean okay um which is which is cool but me i'm just you know i walk into a place i walked into places and they find out what you do and all of a sudden you know this the information you're getting is kind of skewed based <laughs> on oh, i don't want to piss that guy off i might need tickets to a show or something <laughs> <laughs> so all of a sudden your treatment just goes right down the toilet god People are always ready to do the math, aren't they? Like people got a calculator. <laughs> like people, it's like it's like everybody's got a calculator ready in in the in their brain. Well, you know, God bless them. It's it's, it's a funny thing, and it, it makes things a bit more challenging. You know what I mean? It's it's enabling in some ways, and you know we've lost some really great people. And I th- lately, and I just think about they don't want to call you out on your shit and sometimes if they don't it's too late you know what i mean it's just mm. it's a weird thing and some people aren't as as lucky as i've been or i can't speak for you but well you speak you're, for yourself <laughs> my, my luck my luck is sitting across the table dude. you talk about calling dude i remember one time you called me i you you, you scared me to my bones like scared in in a good way but but it was it was it was a thing where what you said i did was so not what i remembered like it it was terrifying sure. it was almost it be, it went to out of body sure. like yep yep didn't do anything at the time but god bless you i mean you you I, I don't know i guess it got me through to the next time that you had to talk to me or something you know but sure. like to that you know in that way but um those moments um yeah looking back on those times where like you would say something to me and that's what i'm saying you talk about calling people out on their shit you were that for me thank you so much i mean and, and believe me i don't i don't ever i don't ever miss a chance to tell people close to me and people i love that you did that that you called me out on my shit you know so i i, I, I appreciate that a lot well, you know, it, it, it comes from different uh, places, too, bro. You, from a friend point of view, going, 
you see what's going on here. You know, it's basically straight talk. You know, here's some straight talk for a second. And then there's the other part of it, which is just like the, the band thing. And to me, yeah. the best environment in the world, most people don't get this, but when you're out playing music or something like that that you really dig, but you got your pals around you and everybody gets along pretty good, you know what I mean? That environment is usually like some of the best kind of stuff that I can remember in my musical and personal life you know that when it when it's working good it's absolutely fantastic you know but when that begins to break down then you know it, it's it's an unfortunate drag you know but uh, but the straight talk needs to happen on a personal level and it did i guess and and on a professional level too you just got to draw the line someplace you know because we all want to have a good time but when the good time starts to <laughs> st- i'm not even gonna start Dude, talking I see, the, I see the movie going in your, i can see it in your eyes like i mean some of that stuff man i just go yeah it is the movie it is the book you know yeah. i mean we could talk podcasts now but i just go and i love to speak frankly uh, but um it's just not uh i don't think it's uh i guess i would have to be on that side of the table and talking to you and you, of course you would have to speak about what you want to speak about. yeah that goes both ways <laughs> yeah i mean i've i've had i've developed into an open book i mean I, I, this life i've chosen has been it's public record you know even now that i do real estate you know what i mean i, yeah. I can't hide my my livelihood is registered with the state you know what i mean like if people want to do business with me yeah they go to the state web website and look up you know it's like i've i've just it was interesting parlay from the band and Sponge and being in Sponge and then parlaying that into the real estate thing. It, it's just as exposed, you know. It's, yeah, it's, absolutely. It, you know, but, there, there were no licenses involved <laughs> <laughs> with being in a fucking wow. rock band, you know. I mean, <laughs> I wouldn't know what the criteria for the license would be, and God only knows what the criteria for losing your license <laughs> In a rock band would be, you know what I mean? Oh, I lost my license to rock. Well, what did you do? Oof. Just not rock, or did, what did you do? Rock too hard. Rock way too hard, man. <laughs> you know, and, and it's funny too because it's like my experience with that stuff, uh, the rock stuff, happened way before Sponge was ever like a a uh, popular, successful band. You yeah, know what I mean, so the the real rock and roll lifestyle is totally preceded the sponge thing you know we talk about the lack of opportunity in detroit one minute i'm graduating from high school the next minute i'm you know hanging out with guys on the east side um you know messing around with selling drugs and things like this you know what i mean i go i should be at wayne state right now right. man <laughs> and instead i'm getting this bizarre education with guys basically in the street you know what i mean like this is what we're doing yeah and it was really acceptable to me and i just go why is that acceptable so that rock and roll thing the lifestyle certainly happened far before sponge ever came around you know i think i was a seasoned pro by the time sponge yeah became successful yeah that makes sense that makes sense for you yeah i on the other hand it was it was it was uh, minor league stuff probably i was, it was <laughs> It was all a preparation for for Sponge. I remember my mom with the when I first joined the band, and uh, we were getting on the bus like it was like <laughs> I, I don't, the, the second show I ever played with Sponge, yeah. like in '99 or something like that. We were on the campus of Michigan State playing some college bar. And sure. My mom came and Marlene came and everything, and we were leaving like. And this was my first real rock. I mean, everything had worked up to this. It sure. all made sense, right? But this was the first time that I was stepping onto the tour bus. Right. And my mom grabbed you. My mom was like, you better take care of him. <laughs> <laughs> she looked you in the eye. And you kind of, you rolled with it. She really didn't throw you off that hard. You go, you go he's in good hands. And certainly you were, but yes. you know it's like what goes on out there. It's it you can't you can't really describe to folks, and oh, you fuck. can't give them any kind of input as to what they, 
might expect out there. Uh, there's a thousand and one things and a thousand and one things I think to get trapped into. But, uh, you know, you roll with it. You just roll with it and you go with the greater good that we have going with us is going to take care of us all. And typically it does, you know. But then there's other stuff that goes on, man. It's just beyond, beyond anybody's control, man, you know. Yeah, and I, I always love what Iggy Pop says about it, man. It's a dangerous for the practitioner. Rock and roll is is a a it's serious, and it's and it's can be lethal. Yeah. It's unhealthy for many reasons, you know, from a mental point of view, from a physical point of view, from relationship point of view. There's all kinds of things. I think that the trappings of it, man, are just insane, and you can't even begin to describe it to somebody until they experience it. And then what do you do then? You yeah. know, you're in it. And you, how do you, how do you kind of extract yourself from it? Because you're in it. Yeah. Well, I'm very thankful for. I'm thank. You talked about the whole education thing. Like I should be at Wayne State. I, listen, I'm I'm super thankful for what I learned. You know, the school of hard knocks, whatever the hell you want to call it. I wouldn't take anything back. You know, what I've learned and what I went through. It's corny, but it's the thing where. If I hadn't gone through everything, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be who I am right now. And I, I take that to heart. I believe that, you well, know. And the, the beauty, and, you know, people say stuff like this all the time. Well, you know, we were kids. We did so many crazy things. We should be dead. But, you know, I mean, there's a lot of things that could have taken any one of us out, man. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. A long time ago. So I just go, wow, we're here, man. That's, that, and now what do we do with the time now that we're here? Yeah. <laughs> Right. You know what I mean? From this point forward, what do we do, you know? Yeah. Uh, that That's kind of the question, the challenge, and, and how well we want to live. I mean, you know, it's up to us. Dude, Dave, um, you know, my brother Dave Coughlin, mm. drummer. Oh, he came out and did a, a set with you he guys. He did. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, man. He, he did a great job, He came man. and grabbed some drums. He fucking calls me, hey, I need the, I need the Rollin kit, man. I'm like, okay, yeah. come on over. He's like, yeah, I got to play with Sponge, like, tomorrow. So he hauls ass over here and grabs the Rollin kit to go through, like, the Sponge live set. Yeah. Goes out and riffs with you. Well, he uh, he became the drummer in Taproot uh, a few years ago. Right. And they were out doing their thing, you know, and something came up to where they had a show in Detroit, really kick-ass show downtown in that little uh, – what do they call that park there by the Hard Rock Cafe? What's that park called? Campus Marshes. Yeah, Campus Marshes. Yeah. yeah. So they had a big show down there, and then they were doing a show in Des Moines. Okay. And it was, and you know, I wasn't doing much, and Dave was like, "Why, why don't you come with us?" Like they, they, they were in between guitar techs, you know. Why don't you come out in guitar tech? I'd never seen him play with Taproot, this big thing that, like, my my brother had achieved, and I'd never seen him live. Right. And he goes, come on out. You can guitar tech. Um, you can meet the band, and you can see me play live, and, and we'll we'll get to hang out together. Fantastic. What a, what a great idea. And I'll never have to go to some bar to see you. I can just tag along, help out, and yeah. that'll be the end of it. Dude, I almost died <laughs> i almost I, I this is how bad it is i missed my cat i missed my fucking cat i was gone for two days and i missed my cat and it broke your heart yes and i was tired <laughs> and i was sore and i was fucking cranky those guys probably couldn't wait to fucking get rid of me those tapper guys i and, and i was like wow i was like if this isn't some message yeah. You know, th like, and, and all I could think of is how hard I was on people who were like that. Of course. But you're saying you're the seasoned pro. You go out for two days in that environment, and you're just like, baby. I was a baby. But you know what? It's not uncommon. <laughs> I was I'm, a toddler. You may remember this, but we had a couple gals, I'm not going to say who it was, out on the road west coast with mm -hmm. a band one time many years ago. And after a day, the girls were melting down crying because and here we are eating breakfast out somewhere between Las Vegas and, and uh, L.A., 
you know okay. and we had a great gig whatever the night before we're sitting eating breakfast like we always do man and we're all pumped up and all of a sudden the girls are crying you know like and we find they're just not accustomed to being out or it's not their environment or something and i'm just like oh this is kick ass <laughs> this is great this is awesome i love being out here man this is cool yeah it's weird you know when you're out of the environment perhaps it's, yeah it's i don't know i take it for granted mm. i i, I well, that was the whole point was how, how deeply, how severely I'd taken it for granted. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you missed your cat. That's rock and roll. I almost died. I missed my cat. <laughs> I felt like, I felt like helpless. Like being, in, and all I could think about is all the people I made fun of. Are oh, you fucking pussy? What are you, come on. We're doing, we're going out for another week. We just got a week more shows. Oh, you know, I got, I'm going to have to make some calls, man. Fuck you. Right. Who are you going to call? We got. This is it. We're out here. Let's go. I mean, it's the it's the no sleep. It's activity all day. It's people, you know, coming at you. A lot of decisions. You got to play a show, and you're not sleeping in your own bed. You know what I mean? So it's just like it's it's a constant sleep deprivation trip. You know what I mean? Uh, and not being accustomed to any of the surroundings you're in. You got to get used to that as well. Which is it's it's an odd thing. You know, I think as we get older, you know. You know, we get a little grumpier, but it's just like it's it is what it is. You know, we can still handle it, but it's just not, you know, like you used to say, the road ain't for everybody. <laughs> it ain't for everybody, dude. And that's the pro that's the, 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 the profundity of the whole of, of the story I was telling you about with Taproot. Like that's all that's just fucking re reverberating in yeah. my head. <laughs> my, what I used to say. You used to say that. <laughs> And we'd all laugh, you know. We'd, right. we'd oh. you know, some little setback of the day. We had a road, road in for everybody. Right, it was great. But then, I look at you guys went out, and we'll talk about the southern um, Summerland thing. I'm interested in talking about that, and learning more about that. But you guys did that a couple years ago. You've done it once already. Yeah, 2013. Let's see who was on. It was, uh, of course, Everclear. Yeah. Uh, who else was on it? Oh, um, uh, live. That's who I'm talking about. Yeah. At, at, at that time when you guys were doing that, so we're talking about all the ups and downs and this 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 path of you know rock and roll and, and what it did to me and what it's done to all of us. And then I, I, you guys are out on Summerland, and I'm catching up on live and their story. Yeah, you guys are out with them. I'm like, right. all right, well, let's see what's going on here. These motherfuckers are turning a town where they grew up into a the premier data farming uh data farm center of right. the of the midwest of the east uh, you know the app you know correct and i and i'm like correct me if i'm wrong but fucking me and Vinny never made a data farm <laughs> like you know what i'm saying like so there's this uh... there's us talking about our path and our story and then i open up an article and on the phone here and i'm reading about live and they're Making data centers and passing legislation, municipal, they're changing municipal legislation to accommodate this data center that they. In that town, and they have quite a facility, which, you know, they got a great studio, but that's kind of the home base. They're repurposing, I think they repurposed some just old warehouse, yeah. which is just stunning. Is it Bethlehem? Where the hell did they grow up? Oh, is it... man. York. I think, I think York. it's. York. We played there. Yes. Yeah. But York is the town, I believe, where that facility is. But, uh, you know, it's a combination of business partners and maybe even like uh, Chad's dad could be involved as well. You know, okay. like, so it's kind of like a family band business partner venture and, you know, very smart business guys uh, where rock and roll plays and all this stuff. I mean, they had an indie car, I think, two years ago at Belle Isle. So, you know, their company sponsored an indie guy. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty sexy. You yeah. Yeah. You're like, where do we sign up for that? <laughs> yeah, I was like, what? I was in a '90s band. Like, where's where's, I, where's my data center? Like, <laughs> where's my indie car? I, I, I gotta call Vin. I like, think something uh, wires got crossed here. But you I know, need to get Vin on the phone. <laughs> you know what? I think that uh, as time goes on, uh, business uh, opportunities present themselves. You're doing real estate. I think it's fantastic. I think, you know. You have all the energy to rock out, you know, and you do all the craziest shit that you do as a rocker. And then 
you live through it and then you go, well, what's next? I have all this energy. Now maybe I'll put it into some other business venture. You know what I mean? So I think that it, the data center or whatever could present itself right. and any of us guys could have something in five years, you know, we're sponsoring yeah. an indie car, you know? Respect, respect. I understand that. I, I see what you're saying. Yeah. No, you're right. Yeah, you're, 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 you're definitely onto something there. Perhaps. I don't know. I mean, I know <laughs> a little bit about these guys. You know, we played the shows with them, and they've done very well with their business venture outside of the group. They don't play a lot of gigs. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, I'm not even sure if Ed, the old singer, right. is, is doing a ton, you know? Yeah, and that's always weird, too, when we saw a lot of that happen. I mean, we're part of it, right? The band was sort of, a, you know, a, a, a story of you know members in and out and stuff but um i don't know it's always interesting seeing with the, with the singer when something happens with a singer you know and, it, and it's a, a a band a notable band you sure. know from that time period right and something happens with the singer that that's certainly kind of but i gotta tell you being out there on the road with the band and hanging out with the audience a little bit and people would watch live and people would go man they sound great they didn't even realize that that wasn't ed singing in the band i'm yeah. not even kidding you right you know, I don't know what to say about that, but it was just like they they did fine. You know? Yeah, they appeared to do fine. That would never fly with us. You, you know, that would never work. Like that's that's that's. I mean, it's a huge compliment to you. It's a huge statement about you know you and, and somebody's got to be dumb enough to lead the charge, and that would be me. Yeah, but, but look what's going on. With, like I heard Blackfoot was out there. Like Blackfoot. Yeah, they without were just Ricky. at the token at uh, our without, buddy's place. Without Ricky, right? Without Ricky, but Ricky's on the, the press stuff. <laughs> it, 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 it's it's co-signed by Ricky. So it's endorsed, you mean, oh, by yeah. Ricky? Ricky? Oh, yeah. Ricky endorsed it. Absolutely. I mean, I think it's pretty cool. You go, well, I would I, talk about business ventures. Why not have a sponge franchise where we, we got, talked about you that? Know, you yeah. sell, you sell like here's the backing track to Wax Ecstatic and whatever. <laughs> and then you guys go sell it someplace, man. You know, well, I was always like, we got two clones of you, Jason and Steven. <laughs> like, <laughs> nice hey, nice. guys, you know, lay off the uh, lay off, the, you know, lay off the, the, the carbs. You know, we need you to look like the old man. Yeah, but you know, you know what? It's it's just it's. I, I I was talking to my sons yesterday, and my son Stephen, my son Jay, Steve plays guitar, Jay plays drums. Uh, my son Jay, he's got his got to go back to Lansing. He's been living in Sterling Heights. Going back to Lansing, he's kind of breaking up their band. My sons were playing a band together. Oh, cool. And, and and I told them this is how it will absolutely work. And for anybody out there that's doing a band, this is how it will absolutely work. The first thing you guys got to do is everybody's got to quit their job. <laughs> and you got to rent a band house in Detroit. Are you with me? Yeah, but I mean, it, it'll work. <laughs> it'll all work. You got to give up everything that you got. Get the band house. Everybody moves into the band house. And you rehearse, you record, and you play shows. And if you got wives, move them into the band house, too. You got to talk them into moving into the band That'd house. Be great. Yeah. Right? Need everybody close on top of each you know, other. Somebody's got to work at like tycoons or, or you know, BTs. It, it, that's just par for the course. You know what I'm saying? You will absolutely be successful. You know, <laughs> it's guaranteed. This and is are they guaranteed? <laughs> how how sideways are their heads? The wives got up from the table. <laughs> the girlfriends wanted to punch me. And my kids, who are doing damn good in this life without, you know, being in a band, said, Dad, I can't do that. And I go, "You want if you want this to work, that's what you got to do. Here is the owner's manual. Here's, <laughs> it's, here are the instructions. It's pretty much that's it. I used to play this game, you know, to the lack of benefit to my kids. It was called How Low Can You Go? And uh, it was like in 86, I think I was playing – with a band from Milwaukee, and to get to Ann Arbor with my drums and my bashed up 73 Plymouth Fury that I stole the tag uh, to get just down the street, uh, the state police pulled me over just before Ann Arbor and asked me wh where I stole the tag from. You know, I sent my sister to Secretary of State to say her tag got stolen on her car. She gave me the extra tag, put it on the car. The cops ran to play. They go, you know, this guy stole the plate or the tag. Uh, they saw the drums in the back of the car, told them where I was going. They probably felt sorry for me. They said, just 
get this car off the highway. We don't want to see it driving again. They, they were nice cops. They let me go. Uh, but anyway, going back and forth to Milwaukee, I was renting a flat in Detroit. You know what I mean? Uh, probably $250 a month. We got all the furniture from my in-laws at the time. You know what I mean? The refrigerator and bed. And I had two sons at the time making very little money on the road, barely sending anything home. Um, I got a call one day from my first wife at the time. And she said, my mom and dad are coming back from Georgia. They took the bed, the refrigerator, and the kitchen table. We got nothing, and the phone's getting shut off. So I used to be able to, you know, like with 250 bucks a month and all, it was really pretty cozy. You know, I could make it all work, which a lot of people can't. But my kids these days, they got really good jobs. They bought homes and stuff like that. You can't awesome. play that game when you've bought a house because I never bought a house until like 94, I think. You know what I mean? Never bought a new car. But I used to call it, how low can you go? And I could go pretty damn low, you know, when it came to fixing cars and crap like that. I could do that. I could maintain a very um, uh, cheap, inexpensive lifestyle, you know. But I think that's the key, though. You know, you got to do things like that to, to sacrifice in the music business and do what you do. It'll work, but uh, you got to make sacrifices or be willing to, I suppose. Yeah. Well, certainly if there isn't some sort of uh, energy behind you, sponsoring you or supporting you, which God knows none of us have. You know? <laughs> there was nothing. Yeah, there was no fucking, there's no uncle in the business. There's no nope. dad with a car dealership. Nope. That was not in our journey. Yeah. Nope, there was nothing. Absolutely nothing, but uh, I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm, grateful, uh, I'm grateful that uh, Marlene and I have had time to talk about that. And I've never heard you talk about the how low can you go thing, but. God damn, that's that's the things that uh, we got by on, the things that you get by on, you know what I mean? And you find it's, it acceptable, because today I just go, I look at my life and I go, wow, this is kind of like a normal life. And it, <laughs> uh, it didn't even dawn on me until about two months ago. I go, this is nice, you know? And then I look back and I started to get depressed, you know? I mean, not, not just bummed out, but depressed, because I just thought, wow, all those years I didn't, have like a normal life you know i yeah. just go that's kind of like stunning and then you go what i put people close to me what i put them through you know what i mean just to follow this idea this dream to to do this kind of stuff you know i think people just look at being a band or music business this they see the performance they see the pictures they, they hear the songs but they don't really understand the sacrifice that's involved to uh to, to do it you it's know. too abstract. It's not. You can't. I don't think. You, I, yeah. You certainly can't explain it. You were talking earlier about you know making people understand and you know having the wives out or you know on the road and them breaking down like it's, <laughs> you, you can't. <laughs> nobody can understand. You it. don't have your cat. Yeah. You know. Oh my god. I was I was a mess, dude. I wish you could have seen me on that on that two day run. Two days. <laughs> and one of the days was in fucking Detroit. <laughs> you know what I mean? It wasn't like I went. You know. Yeah. Des Moines, Minneapolis. It right. was Detroit, Des Moines, and yeah. then back. You yeah. know? It was too much. What you just said, um, man, you said something really cool. You were talking about um, having a, a, a normal, a moment of like feelings like kind of a normal life. Sure. I was, <clears throat> what, 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 what triggered that? What was, what was your surroundings, or what was the moment where you, if it was a moment, I don't know. What was the feeling? How'd you, how'd that come over you? Well. I, I think how it came over, how it came about, you know, I was really thinking about, like, we we wrote a new record, you know, and you go, well, what what do you talk about? Well, what can we talk about on a record that makes, I don't know, makes people interested or makes me interested in it, you know? Like, what are we going to write about drinking? We're going to write about, like, you know love or these kind the of sex we used to have <laughs> <laughs> exactly it's just like what do you talk about man so you know i just started thinking about stuff just kind of grappling ideas from my my past you know what i mean just going what is it that i can or do i feel like honestly talking about anymore you know what i mean that that is interesting to me or i can feel passionate about or something that just strikes some kind of emotion in me and that's when I started to think about the normal life that, that kind of I got now and how abnormal it was that I, I didn't even realize how abnormal it was back then. That's when it kind of came over me, and I'm like, wow. That uh, it really, uh, it was like, uh, you know, kind of 
revisiting. I don't want to say it's a sinking feeling, you know. You just mm-hmm. go, wow, that was really kind of, I suppose, charming in some ways, but kind of uh, harrowing. <laughs> it, it, unacceptable. I just go, how was it? Unacceptable. Thank you. That those yeah. things were acceptable then. It, you know what I mean? It would be unacceptable to me today. And I, I don't know if that's age or whatever it is, but, uh, you know, just uh, to, to be in an environment or environments that, uh, and I know people say it all, oh, we should be dead, this kind of crap, but why is it acceptable to be sitting in a place in Detroit, you know what I mean? Um, you're sitting there indulging in drugs and bad places with, you know. Yeah. Yeah hookers if you will you know what i mean around well, you you're just like what what am, what was i thinking at the time why was that and i wasn't even going this is rock and roll i'm just like yeah this is what i'm doing so much of it felt like and i'm, like, I'm not speaking for speaking for myself i'm like because i had the same thoughts but like so much of it was like equipment like it was um it was tools like i guess you rationalized it or maybe i did as like this is the the kit this is the kit that you're supposed to use the tools of to do what you're doing whatever this thing that you're doing whether this how whatever metaphor you want to use this path you're on this journey this fight that you're fighting this whatever it is well here's the tools the tools is fucking you know drugs you know fucking you know bad decisions right that's just that's just the toolbox that they handed you at the beginning of this journey right remember back when you started when you were fucking 12 and Started learning the Beatles songs. Here's your here's your kit. Open this up when you're 18. <laughs> Open this one up when you're 18. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so it's like standard standard operating procedure or something. You know, it's, it slips into being the equipment that. Yeah. And that's acceptable. You know what I mean? It's not like. No. It, it's, that's it's, acceptable to build a life. You know what I mean? I just go when you're looking to build a life and a career and this is where the serious part comes in because you know we've been we can look at it and we can laugh and chuckle but you know when i see some of my buddies that uh, are ready to retire now you know what i mean what are you doing i'm out on a boat you know um Mm. you know um yeah they never tell you about that do they and then, what are you doing? Well, man, I'm going to go, you know, I'm, I'm, I got a little gig I got to do, you know, because this is what I do, and I got nothing else. You know what <laughs> right. I mean? This is all I do. How's your 401k? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> there is no such thing, you know? Right. And it's just like, you go, well, you know, the next song I record, maybe I can license it somewhere. It could be a co-commercial in Japan in, in 10 years after I'm dead. I don't know. But it's just, you sit and go, the reality of it is, it's that toolkit that you got, you know, that doesn't often build a career that you sit and retire on, you know what I mean? And that's yeah. where it gets kind of dicey again. So, you know, those bad decisions, certainly we live through it, but then you go, what do I got to show for it now? You know, a career, yeah. But you know what, after you not fitting into your leather pants anymore when you're 66 years old, you know, mm-hmm. what do you do then, man? You so, know? yeah. But you're not thinking about that, right? You're not. Are you? You're. You've done it. You've made it through. You're doing stuff year after year. You're not thinking about sixty six and sixty eight. You're no. not thinking about the leather pants. No, right? no, I never really have. You know, those yeah. things pop into my brain. But I just sit and go. At, there's some interesting things that go on for the guys that seem to be able to hang in there, which is now it's like the the uh the pack is thinning out man you know there's just mm-hmm. not guys around anymore you know mm-hmm. bands I mean, it's so difficult to do it the bands aren't even around anymore right. there's people aren't around so all of a sudden you know the pack is so thin and you're out there now it's you're something different because you've actually survived you've actually maintained some kind of career so at this point you know i go there's, there's hope for the future you know i've done it this far and we were able to do it smart even when you were out there with us. We were able to do some smart things. Yeah. But we can still do that, you know. Not a lot of bands can. So I go, 66, yeah, it's, it's certainly possible. Yeah. Well, if it's possible, it'll be you. You'll be able to do it, man. <laughs> <laughs> Got 
this far, bro. Yeah. So, Summerland. So we did a thing in um, 2001. No. When did we do that that first 90s reunion thing? You know what? That could have been 03. 03. Would, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was... Uh, uh, what's her name? Um, New World Order. Seven Mary Three. Seven Mary Three. Uh, uh, gin Blossoms? Gin Blossoms. <laughs> and uh, wasn't the Spin point. Doctors. Yes. Did we get them all? Yeah. Seven Mary Three, Gin Blossoms, and the Spin, Spin Doctors, Doctors, and, and yes. Sponge. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Seven Mary Three out there, not so much these days, you know? Yeah. Talk about, you know, uh, uh, oh, with, uh, Jason. We became close with those guys, man. Good those, guys, yeah. man. He's got a real good thing going on at Film Company, from what I understand. Yeah. Right? He's done very well with But the rest of the cats, maybe studio stuff, I don't know if they're very busy, but they're not out there that much. You know? Right, right, yeah. But you're bringing us up. Did... What the, oh, the, well, what was interesting is that I felt, and I've, I was always, you know, rose, it was all fireworks and fucking launching to the moon for me. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Always, you know, so I'm like, oh, here it is. Here's the, this is the primer for the return of the 90s like you know because we saw the hair thing happen you know the return of the oh, 90s and we're yeah, gonna, like, and it's dude, 03 I'm like, Woo! <laughs> I'm like this is it we're setting that we're making a template um we're you know we're gonna be doing sheds every summer we, we did right. it we did it man and uh and uh this was gonna be the template for it and it didn't, and, didn't work out like that right but. and then you go into the the mickey rourke the wrestler portion of your yeah. career you know what i mean <laughs> there it is you know <laughs> i i watched that movie one day when it came out and i go what am i watching this close to we, home we lived too close it. to home <laughs> <laughs> too close to home yeah the uh the wrestler mickey rourke the wrestler and um what was the Jeff Bridges movie? The Black Black uh, Yes. Oh, man, you 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 got that too. Man, crazy is it Crazy Heart you're talking about? Crazy Heart or Black? I, I forget what it was, man. You, but yes, exactly. I mean, it was uh, the first gig hard, he went into. Hard to watch. It was like the Ranch Bowl out in Oklahoma or something. I forgot where that was. Yes. Man, but I mean, the Ranch Bowl was like, like the place that he walked into to you know during the day to talk about the show. That place was like a palatial estate compared to the places that, and I thought the movie was just not dark enough. You know what I mean? When it kind of turned out <laughs> nice at the end, I'm just going. Uh, I remember thinking it was dark enough. <laughs> I go, it didn't get dark enough for me, man. Uh, he lost a kid in the mall. I felt bad for him, you know, with that. But I just go, it kind of turned out good for him at the end because he hit a home run with a song and you know, everything was good. But you know, it it should, I, I thought it may have gone from dark. The darker, yeah, <laughs> certainly could have. I made it. a little more sense to me, dude. Those are the kind of movies where I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. First of all, hard to watch, and then I start thinking, you know, you see a movie like that, you see The Wrestler, you know, there's a couple other ones, and you go, well, I, I all I ever have to do to explain myself is have here watch these three movies. I think that's something, man. I I, <laughs> I, I, I found myself saying the same damn thing, man. And what's really kind of motivated me is oddly enough is uh, the scene that the the last the final scene of the wrestler when he was jumping off the top rope that's been kind of my vision for a lot of the things i do anymore it's the last jump off the top rope you know what i mean here i go <laughs> <laughs> and then the screen turns black how's it end you know i don't know here yeah go. here we go oh man i hope it's not i hope that's not coming soon i mean that's that... i get a little freaked out as the people are dying you know i tell you who gets really freaked out about that my mom diane krakowski she man the her contemporaries are dying oh you know what i'm saying her yeah. and, and it's like that i told you she split you know she went sure. back down to savannah yeah and i mean she came out of the bedroom crying one day like somebody from the moody blues had died or something you know and it's, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm i'm not laughing at her i'm just you know laughing with her you know but it was something in her time period a contemporary you know yes. had passed away and she's like, I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta. I don't. I gotta. I gotta enjoy my life. You know yes. what I mean? We don't have much time left. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And I don't know. I don't know if it's morbid, but you know, what do we? You know, I'm. I'm not getting any younger. I think about it. You know, and I think about you. You know, I think about the guys, the other guys in the band. You know. And. Uh, you know, we've had some health scares in the band, man. You know, and and. Thank God, 
we've gotten through this stuff. It, it's, uh, but it, it, it's, it, it's, how can I put it, man? It's, uh, it's great to see, despite everything, even health scares, man, the survival of it. You know what I mean? It's just, it, 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 it's, it's wonderful when it can still survive. And it's wonderful when we still like, you know what? We're getting older, man. We don't look like the bands that are 20 years old. We're not out dyeing our hair. And, you know, I mean, we're kind of, if you can grow old gracefully as a rocker, I mean, we're, we're doing that too, you know? And it's not like I'm cashing the guys in for younger dudes, you know what I mean? No. Or uh, younger yeah. chicks God or anything like that, man. Yeah. And we can go out there and have a great time. We can still rock, you know? Um, so despite all the, the time, the age, the health scares, all these things, man, we still, you know, we still roll with it. And it, it, to me, it just it gets it gets better. You yeah. Know? Well, that's one of the things I was going to talk about. We're going to circle back to the Summerland thing. But um, I remember on that New World Order tour, and I'm I'm not tooting my own horn. I know this, but we were we were pushing that show like we were pushing those bands like there's no doubt about it without i mean doubt. and i think if you had any of those guys in those bands sitting here hanging out talking with us they i think they would recollect it you know the same way but without a doubt man you know i i, I always loved the story <laughs> when uh joey's daughter rosalind was out on the road with us mm -hmm. um she was very frank with robin from the gin blossoms you know like we were you know you when you talk about we were just going out there and killing yeah man we we're like got, we we're like missiles man like we were you know, i remember just diving out into the crowd man you know what i mean and doing my thing and it was always a blast and i know it pushed the other bands to do stuff but rosalind took issue with robin because robin would put his toe on the barricade and and he would ask the crowd can can i can i jump will you hold me yeah, yeah. Will, will you, <laughs> will you hold, hold me if i jump in? will you and he and it was he, he was doing these release of liability things like You'll hold me, right? <laughs> Will you hold me? And he would scan maybe eight. He'd look for a, a strong person. You'll hold me, right? And all while the band's playing. The band's playing. Exactly. Fucking, hey, Jealousy. You know, and he's, hey, you'll hold me, right? Will you hold me? <laughs> That's absolutely correct. Ros so Rosalind called Ro him on it. Huh? She did, yeah. You know, and Rosalind, I think that was just before she played with the Distillers, perhaps. You know, she did uh, a couple tours with them. Uh, she sat him down one day, and she said, "She she, she sat him down." She did. She told him, "You, Robin, you can't ask people, you know, to to hold you. You just got to do it. You got to jump in. You know what I mean?" And it, it's funny. I just go, "Yeah, I think we did motivate some people out there, some of the other bands, you know, to go out there and kick ass." And that that's fine. Somebody's got to be first, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, we had no problem being first no, on that tour. No, 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 no problem. No. Dude, you're, you described us as missiles, right? We're talking about how we set the bar at that point. We, dude, we're so badass that our offspring... <laughs> who can say that? <laughs> Mazzola's daughter is sitting Robin from the Gin Blossoms down. That's and give it, of Yeah, it. come on. That's badass. And, you know what? That, and and he, he, he listened to her. You know, it yeah. wasn't like, you know, what is this little gal doing? No. You know why? Well, she, she had a legit thing of her own. She was a guitar player for the Distillers for a, a moment. You yeah, know, and I, th I think she pushed that thing too. You know what I mean? Sure. I think they adopted her her vibe. You know, and that's that's what I was told. You, you know? ever listen to the Distillers? You ever go yes. back and listen to that stuff? Yes. Mm -hmm. I got it on my fucking workout thing. That that shit's awesome. Like the, it's, it's it's the real deal. I hope it doesn't get forgotten about. I hope there's other people listening to the Distillers because that shit is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. I don't know what Brody's doing these days, man. No, I have no idea. Yeah. I'm sure you could YouTube her and look her up. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> so the Summerland Tour call. Now, this is what's interesting, and people might not know this about the Summerland Tour. So nothing happened. My dream of the 90s every summer. <laughs> <laughs> like, Where's I saw us. We were going to have a reality show. You know, we were going to have songs on Guitar Hero. Like, I just, hey, this is it. The train's come in. Our ship has come in. And the 90s are going to be back and, the, you know, all of our problems are solved, boys. Didn't happen. But then fast forward to 2013 and I see you guys took into this Summerland thing. Yeah. And it turns out that the guy driving this train is Art Alexakis from Everclear. Yeah. So how did that, well, how was he inspired to be the guy that, that fires up the 90s thing? You know. I'm not exactly sure, uh, other than Art 
has a great business head, you know, and his brand that he's developed here, the Summerland brand, um, it's it's worked for him. I don't think he necessarily has to have Everclear. Like, he could probably put together a group of bands and Everclear is not even involved in Summerland. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, that certainly it would be like, you know, uh, Lollapalooza. Does Gene's Addiction always play Lollapalooza? Mm -mm. No. Right? So, I mean, it's like, Art could put that out on the road, perhaps without ever clear, you know. But Art's always had a great business head. So as far as I can understand, Art, great idea, puts the bands together. I think at one time, Mark McGrath was his partner back early on in the Summerland tours. Oh, okay. As on the investment or on the yeah, business side? Yeah, on the it? business side, which okay. I don't think is the situation currently this year. But I think maybe he partnered up with Mark and they had this idea. They put the groups together and they went out and did this thing. Okay, you know. But McGrath's band is on this year. This right? year, yeah, 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 yeah. So, you, so in thirteen, you get the call, and it was um, Everclear, Filter, right, live, live, and you guys was yeah, it the four, the four bands, yeah. yeah. And I kept an eye on you. I, you know, followed along on YouTube. You know, saw the the videos that come up, and I was I was impressed by a couple things. Um, the first thing was is how good everybody looked. Like everybody looked really good. Like everybody looked healthy. Everybody sounded good. Like none of like like you guys, all of them, all the bands sounded awesome. There was nothing missing. You know, performance wise, and the um, the crowds were strong. Like yeah. you know. I'm 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 here, you know, back at headquarters, rooting rooting you guys on and keeping tabs on what's going on. And you're in the back of your mind, you're like, "Fuck, there's gonna be an empty theater, and what, you know, there's gonna be an empty shed here somewhere." God damn it, you know. I hope, but I hope not. But here, one of these YouTube videos, it's gonna look bare. I never saw it. Um, I think the promoters did a great job. Um, let's face it, some of the like, for example, we did a gig in Kansas City, and. Uh, being the first band on, sometimes the crowds just aren't there when we go on. Um, but again, I bring this up, I think it's a great example. And this happens in many, many big venues, you know what I mean? Um, it's just the business. If a promoter's not making money on tickets, perhaps, mm -hmm. it makes sense maybe to give some tickets away because you're going to sell beer and you're going to sell parking yeah. and, you know, or you're going to sell concessions. So it's like promoters do these deals to where they can if they can just get bodies in the venue you know what i mean and this is does not happen all the time but uh you know if there were some situations where maybe ticket sales weren't what people would want them to be mm -hmm. there, i think there's ways to fill seats yet you know and it still makes it work so there's different things to do in the promoter world i think to make these things work and make it work for everybody you know the bands the promoters those are the best situations and i think it has proven itself correct because art is still out doing this thing. You right. know what I mean? If those things didn't work, the tour wouldn't be going on. But these things work, and it works for everybody, and that's the only way. Yeah, and you live to see another day. You know exactly. You do, yeah. Exactly. And he's done it. Um, he's done it. Like you guys were on in thirteen. Yeah. On this year, he did fourteen and fifteen, right? Did correct. He? Yeah. 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 He didn't. He didn't skip a year, from what I recall. Cool. Yeah. Now this year. From where I'm sitting, it sounds kind of big. I mean, I'm not saying that Sugar Ray was in, in my fucking you know CD collection or or whatever, but I but I can appreciate the fact that they had some pretty big hits and Sugar Ray was a pretty big band for this '90s. Thing. Sure, absolutely. So you combine Sugar Ray now with Everclear, and then you got Lit and you guys. Yeah. That that sounds like a pretty big yeah. It's pretty bill. pretty solid. Uh, Sugar Ray will be closing. Okay. Yeah. So the, that makes sense. I guess they're like the, the headliner, but I think that's a great, you know, smart decision by Art. You know, I take exception to you guys being billed below lit. I'm sorry. You know, it doesn't matter. I'm just a guy in my basement fucking doing a podcast, but I mean, <laughs> I'm not in the band. But I just listen. I know because I came from radio. You know, I knew the the the, the sure. algebra and all that shit. You know, yeah. and I, I was the one who had to explain to people sometimes why we were openers. Yeah, I would have to explain. Well, you know, Plowed did this well, and then Molly didn't quite cross over. Like I had to explain right. to people right. why right. we were. You know, 
But, dude, I don't know. Happy to be out there. <laughs> <laughs> but like you say, you know, back. That's back, a challenging one, dude. Back you know. in, you know, 2003 when we are out there, just, you know, we're the ones kicking yeah. open the doors and starting the night. And that seems to be like the role that we play for some reason. Man. Still? Is it still? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah. We're just out there. I believe it. I gotta, believe it. We're the ones kicking the doors open, and I'm, I'm cool with that. You know, I've gotten uh, used to it. Uh, hopefully it doesn't – I just don't – it's not my default. Well, that's where we'll play because i got to tell you, it was never, like, brought up as an option to me that we would play anywhere else, any other yeah. slot. That was it. It was brought to me. This is what's going on. This is when you play, and there was no discussion. Well, let's face it, and I learned this a long time ago. You're better suited for that – arena of business negotiations I, I i i you know i learned that a long time ago i i'm i'm a bull in that china shop and we learned a long time ago that although i knew a lot and i knew a lot about radio and i tried to share that with you certainly at the high level the higher levels of negotiation in the music business <laughs> i was not the guy i was not the guy to do that you know i had a tendency for people to walk away angry you know or or, or are confused in some way. So there's no doubt that you finesse that a lot better. So I'm sure whatever slot you're in, it's the slot that you're supposed to be in. I, yeah, and I yeah. always look at it like, this is too, bro. I look at it like uh, we can go out there and uh, sell a lot of merch, hang out with the, the fans. Yeah, there's a bench to that slot. And we're out there, man. We're out there early, man. We're out there early selling stuff to people, and that's, that's kind of cool, you know? Yeah. yeah. And we still do that thing, man. We're out there... You know, hour, two hours, whatever it takes. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm going to make it out. I think you guys got something in, um, I think, Kalamazoo, Kalamazoo or Wing something Stadium. like that. Yeah. I'll try and bug you to 20, get on that. 27th, maybe? Yeah. You're going to bring your cat? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'm going to bring, uh, Marlene wanted to bring a friend that, that's never seen the band, so she yeah. wants to. Okay. Yeah, she wants to. Show off her VIP access a little bit, maybe in Kalamazoo. If yeah, we can, if we can work that out, we got that down. Um, I, I got to ask you about the. Um, I got to ask you about the beer project. Sure. And um, but I would be remiss, in, and uh, I know our time is limited here, and I want to keep you too long. You guys got to get on the road. You got to get with the family. I, I appreciate you coming in so much, dude. I hope you understand. Oh, thank you. Um, I can see that the Flint thing got as deeply under your skin as it did mine I, I i you know you're not on facebook unless you're you've got some fucking alias or whatever but i i don't i can't keep in touch with you that way but i, I you know through the band stuff through yeah. whoever's operating the band website these days i can see you know i'm watching i'm always watching rest assured and i saw you write a song you know what i mean i think you cut a video what what you know and i was like okay well obviously vin and i are on the same page with this and i could see that you were furious you know not just a song you know i could see that you were angry yeah so how did that all how did how did that all flow through you and uh and what sort of piece did you or what side of what sort of understanding did you try to come to it you know with yeah i i really don't think and with, with the kind of this resurgence, this this thing that's going on in Detroit right now, you know, with Midtown and just this, and it is wonderful. It's it's a city that I don't even recognize anymore in some ways, you know. Mm -hmm. I certainly think that is wonderful. But I think a lot of people really don't understand what it's like to live in the inner city, you know. Um, and again, when I was talking about having a normal life now, when I look back at the city of Detroit when I was growing up or when I was trying to raise a family, it was pretty insane, you know what I mean? Like, when I think about the folks, the disadvantaged folks in Flint, disadvantaged monetarily, disadvantaged because of the situation they're in, we wouldn't accept that if we were talking about it was a water crisis in Birmingham. You know, the, fe yeah. the federal government would, like, you know, the National Guard would immediately be there. You know what I mean? Uh, not just handing out water bottles, I guess, but, you know, there'd be a just that would be completely 
unacceptable. And I look at the situation not only in Flint with water, but I look at the situation with educating kids in Detroit and the environment that exists there. And I know there's a lot of politics and money and people talk about all this stuff. But at the end of the day, we're talking about the education of kids and why the, the situation in the neighborhoods are so dismal but we just kind of go, we just throw up our hands and go, well, that's just the way it is. Or the water situation in Flint, I go, people just kind of go, eh, you know, I guess we'll accept that because we're people of color, you know? Yeah. And the frustration of that. And I understand what it is to grow up in a city where the abnormal is accepted, you know? And I understand that. I spent 36 years in the city of Detroit went to high school there, put my kids in the public schools. I get it, man. I know what it's like. So I see that. And to write a song, you know, yeah, it vents my frustration uh, to some extent, but it, it only touches the tip of the iceberg as far as my frustration regarding the water, regarding education of kids. That's just the tip of the iceberg. So, you know, a song, yeah, I'll write a song, but uh, it's just... Uh, That's just enough to... That's just enough to keep it from boiling over, just getting a song out. I, I, and, you know, and you write a song and you go, <laughs> do people really get, do people get it or do they really care? You know, did they, you write a song and uh, the, the, does it really change people's opinion? Does it really enlighten? I don't know, man. These days, I don't know. I think it, um, I, I don't think it could hurt. If it's another piece of content, listen, listen this. I can tell you for firsthand experiences, our, our world is driven by content. That's the future. The future of information is content. And, you know, it's like I was telling you, you know, to come on down and do, you know, do the podcast. It's, 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 this is content. This is content that's going to benefit you, benefit the fans as you guys go out yeah. on this tour. You know, it, it's content. So for you to, you know, fire up a song, write it, make a video of you singing it, record it do a press release about it or, or have an interview in a paper, it can't hurt, Vin. Well, I mean, it, it certainly can't hurt. And I think when you talk about, like, I'm not visible on Facebook, for me to actually, and I'm not that Facebook guy, to actually sit and the song basically writes itself, you know what I mean, based mm -hmm. on my just, like, I'm pissed off and I got something to say, and those songs usually write themselves. But to actually make a video and post it, you know, that's that's just not typical you me right you know so for me to do that i go yeah my my intent you know but you have somebody doing it because i see you you're getting better like somebody behind you or somebody next to you there's somebody i don't know if it's yeah. i envision it being dana or something well, maybe or, you know. andy does stuff you know that, that somebody kind of thing. pulls the thing up and you're getting out there you know i can see yeah. that you're you know, you know it's getting on the radar i had um um, like I said, the, the the pilot episode of the Tim cast was a journalist from Flint, guy that I you know practiced jujitsu with, Scott Atkinson, great guy, fantastic guy, author. He uh, just curated an uh, anthology about Flint called Happy Anyways. Oh God, the Flint and I know Happy Anyways. Wow, yeah, I'll get you a copy of it. Um, he. When he started down the path of digging, you know, his own journalistic journey into checking into the Flint water crisis, and, you know, he lives in that area, he grew up in that area, he teaches in that area, he works in that area, he starts following the breadcrumb trail, and, it, and all paths lead to a figure called Pastor Bob. Okay. Pastor Bob keeps coming up. And, and, well, oh, well, if you want to know what's going on, you got to go talk to Pastor Bob. Oh, yeah, you should ask Pastor Bob. This keeps coming up. Well, how do I see him? His church is right down there at the corner. He's right there. Cool. So he introduces himself, Pastor Bob. I'm Scott, you know, from Flint, and uh, I'm here to talk with you, you know, about the, the water crisis. And he goes, oh, sure, come on in. He says, yeah, I, I, I came across you because I'm, um, somebody told me that, uh, you know, you're the water guy. And he goes, oh, yeah. And so his first question was, and they sort of hunker down to start talking about the issue. And he says, so, Pastor Bob, when did you become the water guy? And Pastor Bob looks at, the, looks at my buddy and he goes, son, I've always been the water guy. Hmm. And what that means is that this problem didn't fucking start in the first quarter of 2016 when 
Snyder's hands got dirty. Yeah. This problem didn't start in 2015 when the news was trickling out about the test results. This problem didn't start in 2014 when it was still uh, uh, unknown. This this problem, this is the tragedy, and this is what gives me goosebumps, is that this fucking Flint water problem has been going on for a long time, bro. How yeah. long? Long, thir- 2013. Yeah. And, this, and the frustrating thing about this lead thing yeah. is that there's no turning back. When you got this thing, kid gets this thing, there's no turning back from this, man. Mm-mm. Antisocial behavior. You know what I mean? Oh, uh, just uh, this. It, there's all kinds of learning disabilities. Things. Yeah, and, and this stuff just doesn't. You don't get cured. You know what I mean? No. You get this, and there's not a magic wand. There's not a pill. You know what I mean? You are stuck with it. Yep. For life. You know, and here you go. What do you do about that? People that are irreparably harmed permanently. Yes. What do you do? What do you know. do? I don't know, but I was furious. I was furious. Like, I was like, I, I, I was sitting there reading this stuff, and I'm like, what do I, I, I want to drive to Flint. Do I drive to Flint? Is that what I do? Say, fuck it. Do, do I start knocking on offices? You know, do I go to Lansing? I was, I was furious. And I guess I'm lucky that I, one of the reasons I wanted to fire this up was just to talk about it, you know, and I was lucky enough to have Scott come in and talk about it. And I'm hoping to get other people that have done, you know, actual, you know, reporting on the whole thing i want to get them here and talk more yeah. about it um but you know just talking about it i guess it's helped and then seeing the people take the water up john our buddy that owns the token he did a thing he put a trailer out and had people bring water and they did a show and they shipped the bottles of water up there you know but man was that disturbing especially when you start talking about kids i don't know i just it's heart heartbreaking heartbreaking inexcusable yeah just inexcusable, inexcusable. the only upside is that they are uh, the press is is checking them more consistently now They're, the press is now at the, at the at the city level um the press seems to be consistently and more severely checking the players that are involved the 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 press conferences are um more difficult for the politicians they're not just letting them slide they're asking timelines they're asking specific specifics about the alternate, the the KVA or whatever that the the other the, the new pipeline yeah. that they're putting resources in. Um, so the only positive out of a really really tragic negative thing is that it seems like there's enough light shining on it that now that the press outlets are able to press them, you know, more consistently, um, you know, ask more questions more often. You know, they can't w- run away from the microphone. You know, they got to ask these questions. And if you can do that, if you can hold them to these timelines that the press are able to get out of them, yeah. then maybe you know maybe that city has a shot. Uh, <clears throat> what's with this beer project, dude? Tell me, about, <laughs> like, <laughs> it's I, I saw the promo, yeah, because you got you got to explain this to me because you've got a bit of a crowd funding thing element to it. Correct, which, you know, so many bands, Live has done it, Everclear has done it, uh, maybe upon our urging to do it, you know, because we had done one, I think, back in 2013, maybe, was 2014 for Sponge, um, to finance a record and road trip. Mm -hmm. And uh, Was that the live record? Yeah, Yeah. yep, the live record, correct. Um, But now putting this new record together uh it made sense for us to fire that up again but um we wanted to do something a little bit different yeah you know i mean just go what what are we going to offer to the, the the pledgers and yeah just a little discussion with uh eric from rochester mills brewery the uh the brewmaster over there uh he was at a gig and we, we were just talking but i mentioned we're going to start recording your sponge record he was like i'd love to come out when you guys are recording i'm going come out anytime you want you know bring some beer you know, so we there can hang go. out. And, right. <laughs> and then I just thought, well, wow, this is kind of cool. Why don't we start talking about Michigan beer? So, which is just you know, an astounding, it's a phenomenon. It's just, I know. Michigan is a great beer state. It is the great beer state. And with the different breweries, I don't care if you're Traverse City or downtown Detroit, you know, you yeah. got Motor City Brewing, Atwater, you got such great beer. And by the way, this is beer that's being shipped all over the country now, you know what I mean? All the world, dude. Atwater, oh my God, it's just like, 
you know, I was talking to John from Coonan uh, a couple weeks ago, and he had a guy drive in from Boston for a seasonal beer. The guy got the beer, got back in his car, and drove back to Boston. You know, there are people that are so passionate about Get out about, of here. Oh, yeah. This, I mean, people just, they're extremely passionate about the Michigan beer. And with the Michigan Brewer Guild events that the Sponge has done, the Orbitsons have done, we've been out there in Ipsy for the Summer Beer Fest, which is 7,000 people each day, you know, which is, a, I believe, a two-day event out there. Uh, we've done... Uh, orbits and gigs down for the Fall Brewer Fest in Eastern Market, and these things sell out all the time. It's just people that love what these brewers do, they, and they have an opportunity to sample a lot of great Michigan beer, and they come out, and they have a great time. So long story short, we're just like, wow. Um, you just start putting the pieces together, huh? Yeah, I mean, we, we certainly have some friends that, uh, that brew beer. Eric coming out to do the, uh, the first episode, if you will, of the beer sessions. We got a chance to you know, show people what we're doing in the studio a little bit. We get a chance to uh, talk to the brewer, we talk to Eric to get his background a little bit, and then we sample beer. You know, we talk about the process, the different beers that they do, why they do it, uh, what's different about uh, the the ingredients of the seasonal beers, and why their their core beers are their their core beers. Yeah, and you do you're doing a track a a time or something you guys are like tracking a song per absolutely get out of here man. why this is kind of cool it's old school style sponge recording mm -hmm. in that you know plod was recorded basically you know i wrote it a sunday afternoon and i called him and i said can you squeeze me in i want to record this song and tim's like yeah come out and i know it was like probably midnight that we got out there to record this thing um, so it's basically just walking in the studio with a tune and going, let's go. And the day starts out or started out typically with Billy, Tim and myself, you know, I got the acoustic guitar and we track the drums, the bass and pretty much the vocals, you know, just got the SM seven. I'm in the control room and we settle on probably three drum tracks, two drum tracks. And within that, those two, three takes, you pretty much got the vocal take. I'm going through. also because you're tracking the vocals as well. You're yeah. getting a couple different takes of everything. Yeah, and yeah. I go, this is exactly how Enough. I want to roll. That's how yeah. we recorded Lead. You know, we sat down and did Lead with the whole band. That was your tune about the Flint thing. Just yeah, like, yeah. We just were like, man, this is how we're going to cut the rest of the record. So we start out in the day, you know, maybe about, uh, we get there at noon by 2 o'clock. We're sitting there talking about the tune we're going to do by 2.30. We pretty much got a drum track, you know, and the vocal and the bass. And then the brewer comes in around happy hour. You know, we sit there and we talk about beer. We got a couple of cameras out. We got an editing thing downstairs. Tim put together a nice little editing suite. You cool know? for the for the video. All the video, yeah. yeah. So we're kind of editing down there. So you're rolling film, and and then and then kind of archiving everything right Sweet. downstairs. And then seven eight o'clock after we've had some dinner. Kyle and Andy get there with the guitars and they uh -huh. really haven't heard the tune ever. And, you know, they sit there and they, they just, we get some like great rhythm tracks, throw a solo on and boom, we got a tune, you know? Wow. Yeah. So you're making a show, dude. You're making it like a reality show. You packaged a little show just and recording a record. Yeah. You know, and I'll get you, I'll get you uh, some of the episodes like Joe Bruschansky, uh, a good friend of ours has been kind of, doing all the filming. Tim's been helping out with the studio footage mm -hmm. and doing some editing. Uh, but we have episode four that is complete right now. So all the pledgers, they have access to the full episode. So if you go online and you pledge 10 bucks, you know, for a, a digital download when it comes out, you got access to all the full episodes. I will send you uh, episode like three, for example. They're turning oh, cool. out fantastic. Oh, I'd love to see it. Yeah, it's been really cool. It, it's really been a blast. And it, a lot of education, too, you know, um, just listening to how different brewers do different things. And we've had guys that they got their beer. We've had Atwater in, Rochester Mills, and those are some monster brewers, man. And they got a monster thing going on to some very new guys like Baffin out in St. Clair Shores where they have one facility. They have uh, a handful of core beers. They love to brew different seasonal beers, but it's – one kind of brick and mortar brewing facility. Oh, and tap room. Okay. It, so it's like we got the guys that are 
have been in business like a year to the guys that have been in business. So they're almost years. a brewer incubator of sorts. Like there's other people coming in brewing other kinds of beer at their facility. At, that... uh, well, at the facilities that they own. Oh, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Okay. Like Baff and Out of St. Clair Shores, they're relatively new. Okay. They got a great local business and an incredible local following. You know what I mean? Yeah. The brewer out there, great young guy, man. You know, he's done fantastic with that one facility. He's thinking about opening up yet another one. But in contrast, Atwater, that, you know, Rochester Mills, these guys are doing great business. Coonan, uh, out in Warren, they have a brand new brewing facility. They're knocking it out of the park, man. You know what I mean? You got to hook me in with those guys. I'd like to have those guys on the show. That would be cool. Anytime. Have, you know, you know have them talk about what they're doing because it's such a big part of Detroit now, Metro Detroit. Oh, Detroit and the state of Michigan, you know. Eric uh, Brigham is the uh, president, uh, I believe he's the president of the. Uh, Michigan Brewers Guild oh. as well. So, you know, just a lot of information, great information, a lot of legislation that these guys do too, man. You wow. Know, on top of education, you know, brewing education, they do legislation in Lansing as well. So these guys are, they're really, you know, sincere, great folks. And like most of these guys say, the brewing industry in Michigan is 99% asshole free. And uh, <laughs> they're always good guys to have in and talk to and, and uh, you know, have them anywhere. They come to our shows and hang out. So Cool. Well, yeah. you got to hook me into those guys. I will. We had Roke uh, Brewing and Original Gravity out of uh, Myland as well. Um, four episodes done. Four are you, done. Are you, are you attempting to finish this before you guys split for this tour or what? How? The record's done. The record's the, done. The record, it, the, Tim's doing some mixes on it now. Uh, we we did six episodes. We were hoping to get an episode done every time we went in. We had some cancellations, unfortunately, uh, with scheduling okay. issues with some of the brewers. So we got six episodes in. Okay. Uh, two more got to be edited. We're hoping to get the last two edited. Well, so it's on the can. You just yeah, got to oh, get yeah, them together. Yeah, okay. Absolutely, yeah. But these will still be dripping out as you hit the road. You're going to be dripping out the yeah, fives. Absolutely, okay. yeah, absolutely. We may put everything together on a DVD. But, you know, we managed to uh, bring out uh, – we had uh, – our girl in the hay beer today, gal, you know, mm -hmm. model gal modeling our beers. And uh, matter of fact, um, wasn't Kayla, I think her name was uh, the last year's Riff Girl, was kind enough to come out and model beers for us uh, yeah. a few weeks ago. That was dynamite. Yeah, we had Pole Fit Revolution come out and set up some poles on the... Uh, the uh, Really? Near the barn, outside, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tim's ma, she was oh. very kind about it. She was she pretty cool about it. She she saw the gals on the poles and she's like, okay, yeah, it's rock and roll. Oh, I can't wait to see that, dude. I was I was just uh, the feeling that that came over me when I saw this beer sessions thing was pride. I was so proud of you in particular. <laughs> I really was, Vin, because it, it was it was multimedia. Like it was like, oh, look at him. Like it was it's like coming together like you brought all of it together well you know? it's and all it, the baby steps over the years yeah and, and then i know tim was pretty pumped up about it too and again it's not like me you know what i mean i'm just not one of those guys but i go if allison chains can start doing meet and grease <laughs> <laughs> then you can make that <laughs> uh, then you can certainly throw together a little multimedia yeah episode thing right 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 yeah, yeah. Vinny. Thank you so much for coming and being part of this, it's man. It's great to see you. I, yeah. You're doing a great job. Yeah. Thank you. You got the Thank mad you. talent. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. It means yeah, a lot coming mad from you. Mad talent. Um, you know, I love you. I, I, you've done so much for me, and and I, 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 I had, I just had to have you be a part of the beginning of this. It just meant the world well, to me. So glad to be a part of it, and yeah. I hope it, uh, you know, this, this show certainly uh, just blossoms. Be safe out there i mean i know i'm not telling you anything you don't know but fucking you know the world gets stranger every day and i just don't want to hear anything weird happening to anybody like you know i mean things stay vigilant man just fucking and I, I know i'm preaching to the choir but god just be careful out there man well maybe we should do this again when we get back i'd like that i'd like that that'd make me feel good it's, <laughs> we get andy in here finally you know yeah that sounds really good, man. Yeah, brother, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Ben. All right, we'll see you all later. Thanks. And we covered a lot of ground, man.